Hello, and welcome back to another episode of International Immersion, a podcast where we seek to capture different cultures, people, and things around the world and bring them to people here and wherever you may be. Today's episode, we wanted to take a step away from the typical topics that we normally discuss, as I have a good friend of mine who works in a laboratory, and we would like to talk with him today about what it's like to work in a laboratory with the current situation of COVID-19, and what's been going on with him both before and after. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce my good friend, Matt. Matt, it's great to have you here today. And we really appreciate you taking the time to talk with us today. Yeah, thank you, Sean. It's great to be a part of this. Uh, I really appreciate your invitation. And uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to talking about this topic. Yeah, so uh, to begin with, Matt, so you work in uh, you work for Purina in uh, St. Joseph by Kansas City in Missouri. And yes. you've been working there for a little more than a year now. That's and right. You work specifically with um, different different types of pet food, correct? Yes, yeah. So a lot of my work uh, is more with uh, urine, actually. Uh, it's uh, I do a lot of work with uh, solubility of crystals in urine and how those are indicators in uh, kidney disease and like uh, uroliths, stone formation. And uh, yeah, a lot of work is relative supersaturation. So we take the urine, uh, these from cat and dog urine, of course, filter it, acidify, run through uh, ion chromatography, and also our inductively coupled plasma uh, mission spectrometry uh, technique. And yeah, basically these analysis, they give us an overview, kind of a profile of the anions, cations, the different, uh, basically the bio, the molecular chemical nature of the urine. And we, from that, we can make inferences on uh, how likely the that cat or dog is, um, can form uroliths. And from that particular diet, the, the cats and dogs are fed a certain diet and they, and after they, it's kind of, it, it's the whole, there's a whole formal standard pet care trial with this. They're fed the diets and they come, the technicians, not me, but the pet care te- technicians will collect the urine and then that urine is sent to me for analysis. And then, yeah, I do those tests that I mentioned and we see if they uh, are likely to form, form stones or not based on that diet. And we ideally we want uh, kind of undersaturated, but there's also metastable, oversaturated. So that's, yeah, that's, that's like a little bit of, um, of what we do. And, and that's like how I fit in with there. I am able to make these uh, analyses, come up with uh, calculations through our equal our, our, our programming and able to send this data to our project leaders so they can move forward with their formulations and get these uh, diets out into marketing and and soon sooner than you realize are on the shelf and yeah it's a vicious cycle and it's great to be a part of that well I must say in a nutshell that's a very interesting job and you know it goes to show what goes in, you know, must come out, and what comes out comes out of animals or us. It's all very important to assess our health and how to improve what we take in. Exactly. Yeah. Definitely. A lot of um. Yeah, it's easy to go on the job thinking about pets and uh, pet care and health, but you know, since cats and dogs and just animals play such an important role in people's lives, it's it's truly humbling to know that really just everyone benefits from this. So. That's- no, and you know, and just in the United States, and you know, and alone, there are you know countless pets, you know, pets, cats, dogs, and many other animals, and around the world, right. I mean, it's almost unfathomable the number of pets people have. You know, if you count, the, you know, the global community, but you know, and that's an interesting part of your job is because you know, pet food is very vital. You know, everyone, everyone has a pet; they need it; they have to have access to it. And at times, like you know, at the or the current situation with COVID nineteen, you know. That's definitely affecting 
everything on the supply chain, processing, development, and you know the output of materials and supplies that people need. And that's not just for people, but you know pets. So you know that, that's got to be interesting. So in your laboratory, like what are like the typical procedures that you do like at under normal circumstances before the current pandemic? Right. So um, really, just um, the, these procedures would just be. Well, a lot of things just have to get done weekly as part of like a routine process. Like with our dionics, our ion chromatography system, we always need to be replacing the eluent or like the liquid basically that flows through the machine to help um, give the separation needed for the analysis of the ions. We kind of replace that all the time, make sure the columns are in check, test the pump, the syringe, um, keep an eye on the waste that it generates, things like that. And um, that's a big thing. Uh, but when we did, yeah, like a lot of, the nice thing is that the on the analysis end, really what we do now is uh, with, under the current circumstances and ways of working with COVID-19, they're all, it's all similar to what we've been doing beforehand as far as um, the actual work and procedures it's just um yeah kind of the little things that are different like trying to keep your distance from colleagues and obviously having to wear a face mask all the time now underneath like sometimes you have to wear a face shield when working with concentrated acid and base so that's as you can imagine that's a whole bunch of <laughs> activity on your uh, face so um yeah really uh yeah things right now um basically that are affected by COVID-19 are actually more administrative somewhat it's just kind of more just like with the the basics kind of the to and from of the different places like we have a, a screening that they do at the like before we can set in go be ask, go past the turn gate to get in they have they ask us questions about our health um basically they take our temperature and ask us if we've been our travel history if we've had any family members or been hang, like who have symptoms of covid or have been hanging out with anyone with covid and uh then they give us two face masks and we walk into work and go go our normal ways. Try to try to do as much normal as we can. I see. Working. I see. So I think you have a good point there. So you know, a lot of people think you know, oh, laboratories they have to be super strict. They have to be very, very careful, and that's very true. But from what you're telling me, it's more the administrative and procedure. So once you're in the lab, not much is changed. If anything's changed, it's just yeah, that we, exactly. Yes, it's just that. Now, when you go to work, you have to be screened. They take your temperature. They give they yeah. they give you two face masks every day, as you said, which that's good. So it's more, and they also ask about what you've done and where you've been. That's on a daily yeah. basis. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So obviously, you know, before before this all happened, that no one would think. Uh, no one would think twice. <laughs> whatever. Yeah. Whatever that phrase is. So I click um asking about that just because that's you know you just don't think to ask that but now you know little things matter and it's it's really to benefit everyone it's not it's nothing personal it's not too weird or I mean, it's it, it's kind of just part it's part of the process well and it, and it's common sense i mean honestly yeah, it, i think uh, in i think in both friendly. for both of us it's common sense because you, you know, don't it, think too much about it it's <laughs> it's, it's fine well i think Given now that, you know, at least in Illinois, Illinois where I'm at, we've been working from home now, or at least I've been working from home now for almost two months. So, yep. you know, I'm definitely yeah. getting a little, you know, claustrophobic, a little over it. Yeah. But at the same time, I'm not complaining because I still right. have a job and I'm still able to work at least, you know, borderline, you know, normal efficiency, you know, compared sure. to when I'm in the office. But, but compared to my job, they definitely are taking more precautions that you were establishment than than mine because you know right. some of our staff where i work at, the, at a university they have to go in and they right. have to wear masks when they are outside their specific offices yes. but beyond that there's really nothing, nothing much else they're doing but where you're working 
you know, they're screening people, they're taking temperatures, they're providing you stuff. So I'm glad to see that they're doing more, you know, preca- precautions and screening, but it almost makes sense because a lab is, you know, there's a lot going on there. And because of the things you're doing and specifically the importance of what you're doing, they have to be more cautious. Yeah, yeah definitely. You know, I think all places should screen everything, but, you know, and that's the, pr- the one issue is screening that it's pretty common, commonly held is that, yeah, it can catch you if you have a fever, but if you're in the latency period of the virus, it's not going to do anything because you haven't, you don't have any external symptoms yet. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So compared to before and now, not a lot has changed. It's mainly when you, when you leave, when you enter work, when you get prepared, it's, it's, there's more, there's more, there's more scrutiny there. Pretty so much. The- Another thing is like our it's Monday, we, we work Monday through Thursdays. It's pretty much like seven thirty or so to five, so it's um, so it's it's still like a full week. That's obviously nine point like thirty eight hours or so. We, we they still treat it like forty, and we get all the benefits and everything, which is nice. And it's been for sure it's been that way for a while. We had to we started we still did like full forty full officially on full hours. Um, like a mid, like late March when they finally were like, okay, we need to do something. <laughs> mid, 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 yeah, mid, late. Yeah. Yeah, that's we, when, we when we, uh, yeah, yeah, because I remember it was early March we started yeah. rotating in and out of the office. You know, yeah. And that lasted not much more than a week before Illinois was like, nope, right. we're going on a stay at home order. Yeah. And then we all were at home. Yeah. Yeah, yeah definitely. Um, yeah, but the, yeah, because how it worked, we we were all sitting at our desks one day. It was, it was otherwise and planned it to be a normal day. And then the site director uh, came in and said, um, "Yeah, do 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 this new virus and just these weird different times. We're going to be changing our hours a little bit. So we are actually doing ten full ten hours Monday, Tuesday." Yeah, Wednesday, Thursday. And um, so, yeah, they just figured, oh, that way, Friday, there's a whole day where no one's here. So that at least limits interactions. And- no, I think that's good, you know, because, you know, unlike some jobs with a la- with lab work, there's really no getting out of not doing it or going to work. Yeah, but, exactly. But I do think it's good that maybe they just reduce one day or, you know, I know other places they're maybe having, like, you work every other day or something like that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Because, um, yeah, we, we got the, the talk about how we, we are technically an essential, essential workers because what we're doing is for pets. So that's <laughs> so I kind of go off what I was talking before about how that's all important, needless to say. Um, but, yeah, and they, we are actually given this slip of paper to um, show – because. During, there was the shelter in place um, at the end of March through early May or whatever officially, and at that time it was po- expected that possibly um, police would pull us over on um, the interstate. Um, yeah, because like it was kind of like I guess they just figured if you're on the interstate, you're not going to any place essential. So. <laughs> but like, yeah. So that we could have proof that we're like, hey, I'm going to and from work, and but that that never, I don't think that ever happened here. That never happened to anyone. So well, I'm glad to hear that. I mean, that I mean, part of, part of me, or I think it's a lot of people would think that's a good thing, but at the same time, yeah. it is kind of nerve wracking to think that if I need to go to the grocery store I, or if I go somewhere where I have to get on the interstate for for yeah. whatever, whatever reason, I could be pulled over, and you know, I need to go to the grocery scared. store or somewhere vital, but. That. Because I was talking with my, my friends, this other, this other group of friends, and, like, finally we were just like, you know what, no, we're, we're not going to get pulled over or arrested for going. That's just silly. I mean, kind of, well, shows the thing that more or less. But I think that was kind of the case anyway. But Well, anytime new rules and regulations are implemented, yeah, kinda, especially during no a time knows, like this. Because it's a new rule. And yeah. Even law enforcement might, no, might be like, uh, <laughs> not know how to exit enforce it i don't know well yeah and you know it's like and these types of situations always breed hysteria and also you know exactly. people are people are definitely anxious they're nervous they're on edge for you know yeah. you know you know i am i'm sure we you know i'm sure you are i'm sure everyone is to, to a varying degree 
But yeah. no, and yes. but you know, you're absolutely right. You know, your job is you know is of, of vital importance. So you know, you are someone that they would be excluded from more uh, severe restrictions on on work and having to be able right. to go to work. But and that's another good point is that you know Purina is a big company and they are interna- international. So that's a good thing. So you know this is what they're doing here. But I imagine internationally they're holding the same standard for wherever they have research centers, distribution centers for pet food or other products that Purina, you know, creates in cells. Right. Yeah, that's the thing. Yeah, uh, we we knew, what was it, February or still January when, like, news of this is starting to be a concern January. for the country. Yeah. yeah, I think, yeah, it was like... Because January is when it really blew up in China, and yeah, then... It was like a it's, little bit before Super Bowl. Yeah. <laughs> and then it started to make, you know, it, and it started spreading February and then it was, yeah. it was really toward the end of February, early March, you know, yeah, that's when like it that. started really yeah. getting a, a kind of a, a beachhead here in the U S and then yeah. it, the rest is, the rest is history as we can already yeah. say, as we can say. Yeah. And I remember, yeah. Cause it was a big deal. Cause in China there is a, there are um, like our, there are sites of people that's like Purina affiliates and china so you know, there was a big deal as far as like traveling and just kind of like that's when they were like limiting things especially with travel and then it just slowly became realized here and just, no i i completely really, can relate to you on that because i had it to... became what it did and yeah no, I mean i was on, on, on an international business trip in the end of january through middle of february and I remember right. when I was flying back, this, it was when it was really peaking in China. And when I, because I, I was in India and I flew back through the uh, London Heathrow. And when I changed flights before I could board, they screened me. They didn't, at this point, they weren't like doing temperatures, but they were asking specifically, have you been to China or have you been okay. to yeah. places in China? And if you had not been, nothing more was asked. But if you had been, right. then you would have been quarantined for 14 days upon arrival in the U.S. Right, <laughs> which you know is not a pleasant thought, but at the same mm-hmm. time, it's like you know, it's just it's ne- it's it's a necessity if yeah. because there's no way to tell, especially right. with the incubation period of this virus being so long. Yeah. All right, so um, the, the, kind of changing gears a little bit. So, based on what your lab, like what your what your company and your laboratory has put into place, like what are your thoughts and opinions about? what they're doing to keep everyone safe and maybe about what their opinion or their stat method of operation has they're using with the virus. I mean, do you agree with it? Do you not agree? Are you neutral? How would you say as an employee? Right. So remember, so when this first escalated, it was encouraged that everyone who can work at home, like definitely do so. Even though a lot of there are still a lot of positions, even like even where you're not working on doing experiments or working with the cats and dogs or pilot plane, where you still need to be on site just to oversee things and move projects forward to completion and things like that. And um, so yeah, it, it was good good there as far as um, yeah encouraging that. Um, but yeah, as far as keeping us safe they, and kind of like having our back, so to speak, they they did. I know they were generous about um, our, our paid time off policy. Like they gave us specifically, like if we if we were diagnosed or like um, a strong, plausible or whatever it's called with COVID nineteen, that we would have like that two weeks like paid. Or, oh, that's wonderful because you're hearing side not taken out of our PTO balance. So, yeah, that's that's good. You know that 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 is such a relief to hear because you yeah. know you hear about a lot of horror stories these days about people losing their jobs or not you yeah. know having avail- ability to do that. And, yeah, and speaking for my job, me and you are in the same boat. Like you know my my place of employment, they're offering two weeks of you know no obligation leave. No, you don't need to report anything. You just have to report what you're doing. If basically if you get it. If, Family member gets it. Your kids are off school, and you don't have one to take care of them. You got two weeks, so that that's nice to hear that both our yeah. both our places oh, yeah. of work are offering some yeah. uh, the same basic, you know, 
Definitely. Uh, relief measure. Right. Yeah. yeah. And so that, yeah, some, some, some generous things there as far as that. Um, but at the same time, there was, um, like, if uh, the whole, there was a whole notion that, like, if you were to travel or something, that they want you to take to I, quarantine yourself for two weeks. And so it's just a matter of they have your backs. So we got to play by the rules at the same time. No, and I think that's really important, you know. I know it's very frustrating for people, but, you know, and yeah, we all have our personal freedom to do what we want and don't want, you know, but at the same time, we have to think about how that affects others. And I do think that, you know, labs like yours or, you know, Prina and specifically your lab, I think if everyone was doing that or did something similar to that, it would definitely reduce a lot of potential, you know, cases. But as we can see, the approach across the U.S. and the world is can vary starkly from place to place in the U.S. state to state. Like Illinois, we're very conservative. We're still on a stay-at-home order until the end of, of this month. Right. Whereas you in Missouri, I think as of this past Monday, they reopened. Right, yeah. So <laughs> that's, you know, it's just, it's just a, I think it's, because it's not a universal approach to it, it right. really undermines the effectiveness of controlling it. Not to mention... There's still a lot we don't know about this virus. There's still we don't. Uh, there's still a lot we don't know about what's going to happen with it. Is it going to mutate? Is it going to change? Is it going to come back? All these things are still up in the air. Whereas a lot of people will say, "Oh, this is certain. This is not." But at the end of the day, right. we're learning more and more, and we, we can't be completely certain on these things. We don't. Yeah. And also, Matt, I think it's really good that you you know shared with it shared with us a bit about what labs like yours are doing because. You know, your lab is, you know, a certain type of lab, but other labs that are working specifically with this virus and other and other types of pathogens, I'm sure they've had to ramp up even more because, you know, if you're working with contagions like this or I'm sure because, you know, a lot of labs now are doing that, it'd be very interesting to see the difference in security and screening that they're doing versus labs like, your, like yours are doing, which is not specifically related to corona, but a lab is a lab at the end of the day. Oh, for sure. Yeah, like pharmaceutical companies, biotechnology hubs, uh, clinical labs, uh, even academic labs. Yeah, it's pretty much all hands on deck as far as like literally just putting everything together, um, think tanks and bench work and whatever, just to come up with these really move forward with uh, candidate vaccines. And yeah, for those alone, it's like you really want that workforce to be retained so like all the better to uh have um them be safe and like uh, go through um procedures for being healthy and screen not that like people there's some value it's like some worth more than others but it's just kind of like when everyone's healthy and doing well well as they say you know the company's best asset is its employees, you know, and it's a blessing to everyone. So, <laughs> yeah. And, you know, and I think that's a sad thing these days is that, you know, a lot of companies, they do invest in, in their employees and they do care for their employees, but at the same time, right. there are many that don't. And it's yes, very, so and there are countless examples that you see on the news or through, you know, just through your circle of friends or, you know, you you know, or in your area, you know, exactly. It's, so I think we all have to counter blessings you know, that you know, we, st- we still are employed, you know, and people like us, if you're still employed, your company is working with you, you're getting you know, options and you have, you have choices. That's wonderful because a lot of people don't have those. And my heart really goes out to those people, you know, all over the world who are facing this because let's face it, you know, the numbers that are being reported, you know, here in the U.S. or anywhere, they're not, they're not accurate because it's impossible to know how many people are affected by this. It's just, it's just impossible. There's no perfect way to report this on it, you know, given the current circumstances, you know, some countries I think are pretty accurate. Others are less accurate for a wide oh, range right. of reasons. So oh, yeah. coming away from that, Matt, so what do you want people to know about like labs like yours and what do you think they should get out of this and what they should take away from it so they can understand like what you're doing and the importance of labs and maybe the procedures they're using to keep people safe. Maybe you th- your opinion about whether they should implement that more standardly across the board? 
Right, definitely. So we, with the current practices and procedures, the experiments, just the, the workloads we have in the analytical laboratory, the specific branch I'm with at Nestle Purina Product Technology in St. Joe, uh, we're already, um, again, accustomed to gloves, um, and specifically pinch pull method when you're done with them to be part ways completely with the germs. That's probably one of the most, that's probably the most important part, actually. <laughs> um, aprons, sleeves, face shields for like the real more caustic or corrosive materials, like strong acids and bases that I work with. Um, and yeah, just, uh, just the SOP is just kind of that sixth sense, if you will, of being safe and just following through with everything and just kind of really being self-guided in your workflow in the in the lab and your different activities. So just having this extra layer of needed, just warranted protection and, and um, promotion of well-being with the... COVID-19 process really it's just kind of just validates that further um really it, it's just uh kind of like what I was saying before it's still it's still believe it or not it's still like work as usual in the lab as far as like still like what what we are doing projects did slow down for a little for a while just because pet care didn't have like the typical amount of standard and non-standard trials going on but um there's still definitely the things that you had to do just for the sake of analysis and we were essential workers still going into work for a reason still are actually but um yeah just um yeah really i think it's just one of those things where again i kind of talked before about the benefits you're kind of blessed to uh have um be able to come in and still be able to help without too much restriction believe it or not and yeah just um really that it's it's still it, it's respectable and it's it's good to know that we are there are efforts real robust efforts being made of limiting the spread by having a screening that's a good start and we is I, I don't think i mentioned this it's also great that we are kind of splitting zoning off the different areas pet care admin and lab and pilot plan are all like just kind of like apart from each other we can all we have to like yeah we can't like go th through the same shared areas or not too much of them anyway so yeah just being able to follow through with this it's uh i think it, it means a lot to the company and just to the quality of the, the the products we're still putting out because if you can't if you weren't following through with this then the system can break down and things will go down research and the integrity of everything and it's just kind of like well you're not you it's not good for yourself and it's not good for your others or the data obviously well human well-being and safety first but it's kind of exactly all, actually all goes in hand when the day is said and done so i think i think yeah that that's kind of the, the, one of the biggest take homes here with my job and how covid is affecting it at the moment yeah man i think you bring up a really good point is that you know you're already used to more screening and you know being more paying much more attention yeah, much more attention to detail in making sure you keep yourself safe, you know, from what you work with already. So, yeah, it makes total sense that with this virus, there's more screening and more questioning when you exactly. enter and, you know, are arriving to work and the process to be able right. to do your work safely. But I do think that, you know, people like you who work in labs, I think that a lot the mainstream, mainstream population who doesn't work in laboratories, they could really learn a lot from people like you because yeah. you are already accustomed to having a set of procedures to keep yourself safe you know, whether it's, you know, working with diseases, working with, you know, animals or with, you know, yes. toxic toxins, materials, whatever it may be, you know, you guys are already accustomed to that. And I think that people can really get a lot of, of good information and, you know, precautionary ideas of how they can keep themselves safe. Right. Definitely. Well said. Yeah. Like, again, like it's built in really in our 
fish are published standard operating procedures and laboratory instructions for keeping our distance with dangerous things. Hmm, does that sound familiar to you? <laughs> like it's just kind of like that applies to everyday life now, even more so with the virus situation. So it's just like, yeah, it's it's all it's all translatable, and it really you can really you re- it's one of those cases where you really can take what's at the bench and apply it to everyday life. Yeah, it's almost I, I you know dare 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 I say it, but I think people in your profession or who work under controlled circumstances, controlled conditions, I think they should have a lot more input on policy procedures and ways to keep people safe because may, they may not be experts with viruses, but they're experts at keeping your you know your, your yourself physically safe from things you are exposed to. Which let's face it, this that's that holds exactly true, and it's the same basic concept with COVID. Yes, definitely. Like, it's all about that credibility, really, like what you said. I remember when this all started, um, we had just like this meeting, this formal uh, floor meeting, you call it, with all the members of our administrative and laboratory group. And so, and we, we just talked about like the proposed ways of working as far as the, the s- splitting of the different divisions like pet care and lab, pilot plant like what I was talking about earlier and how our work schedule changes a little bit and you can't wonder and be like, well, who came up with this? I know it wasn't the site director. It had to be someone with an <laughs> epidemiology background or medicine even. It's just kind of like, who? who? Who came up with this? And, oh, no, it all starts from, from yeah, those, those individuals, like just a high a, a, a group, almost like a, a little oligarchy of um individuals lack of a better term just to really come up with this um system and yeah it, it just when you think of it it's a mentality thing i guess you think of it that way then it's it kind of it's more um it's more encouraging you you have that backing that sense of uh of just like this makes sense and we really can work through this yeah, it's all about teamwork and understanding. You know, it's like the, you know the people in admin, all the departments have to be aware of each other and understand where they're coming from. You know, and like they say, you know, sometimes the best laid plans and precautions don't survive first contact. So it's very important that people take that into consideration, and especially the pe- the decision makers have to have to know that, and they should, and they should, and honestly, they should be required to take information and get feedback, and you know updates from the people on the ground who deal with it and are, are experiencing it and i think that yeah many places are doing that but as we can see there are many many places both companies governments states federal this is in here in the u.s that it's really kind of a slippery slope there yeah i can definitely i can't help but think that where there will be some kind of um assessment questionnaire on like how how I think this was handled, and I, I mean, I'm sure there'll be a lot of interesting feedback. But I think overall, it's, it'll be constructive. It'll be positive, and I think, and that, I think, just that alone says a lot about the kind of collective nature of this and how we're all. You hear the more or less kind of hate to say this cliche but ads on radio about we'll get through this together and unprecedented times but, but it's true you know we have to come together during times like yeah, this it really it really is about that i mean just like there's different philosophies and how everyone is good and we come together it really boils down to that and yeah i'm sure it'll definitely be evident um <laughs> on paper or in data <laughs> you know the hard stuff to be able to take to court when this is all done and you know there's going to be so much speculation you know in hindsight this in hindsight that Uh made after all this you know because we're going through the worst pandemic you know since the spanish flu of 1918 and 1919 you know you know aids was bad in the in the 70s and 80s but it wasn't like this it wasn't it it could not spread like COVID can spread and yeah matt so no i think that you have some really good points and you've kind of given some at least a, a, a view into what it's like to work in a lab and how you know People now are experiencing this, but no, you kind of go through a similar routine every day based on the nature of your work. So I think that's really important and people can gain a lot of, you know, useful tips from that. So, 
so that so like you know we're sort of about, about to call, call it call it quits for the day. But um, do you have any tips or suggestions for people that you think could help them through this based on your own experience? Yeah, so I, I think just to kind of rehash what I said earlier, I think it just boils down to having faith and literally just like a predetermined set of directions that are really by like people, established people, kind of kind of a thing we talked about. Credibility does actually go a long way here. Um, I know a lot of people don't seem to think that for reasons, but like, I think it's just really about the trust and that plays a factor here. But then it's about what works for you at the same time. Like uh, something I, I kind of didn't go into too much, but I mean, obviously there are rules you have to follow. PPE you have to wear for certain procedures. That's just, it's what we're told to do. And it's just like, oh, well, if we don't do this, then this happens and it's bad. Well, I mean, just maybe think through that. Um, it just, uh, I mean, sure, you can like have the thoughts about being that way. Yeah, it does kind of, it's, yeah, it's a little off putting at times or it can be, but um, kind of come up with a system that works for yourself. Everyone is different, um, so you can kind of gauge, gauge that accordingly. If you need to take more breaks, do so. And that's, that's a thing. Um, just, we, we were talked at work, do, um, since we have to wear face masks in the lab, and that's not always a friendly <laughs> combination, not always a friendly synergy with wearing safety goggles, safety glasses, due to it fogging up and just kind of causing other hindrances. So take breaks if you need to. Kind of gauge, maybe work slower, just work more, you know, like a kind of more settled pace. Um, ask for assistance and guidance. Uh, help is always good with your other colleagues who are going through the same, like literally the exact same situation as you, just not your own body, obviously. Um, or a mind, but I think that's where it comes into play. Just gauge it for yourself and just, um, I, I think that's the big thing here. Rules are important, yes, but kind of have your own way of following through with it and test it. Come up with, come up with the ways of working. Trial and error. Um, so in other words, you're saying be scientific about it. <laughs> yeah, you pretty much. That is kind of the scientist in me talking here. But that method really does work about asking questions, making observations to start out with, and then coming up with – You know, it, exactly. You know, it's science. it's not been continuously used yeah. for the, the length of time it has because it's, because it's just a set of rules. It works. <laughs> I mean right. it's proven exactly. to work. Yeah, that, that's, that's my plug-in for science for the day. <laughs> but yeah, no, it, that actually it does apply. No, I that, think people should give yeah. it a try for sure. No, for sure. And, you know, I think at the end of the day, people really blow things out of proportion and it make things a lot more complicated yeah. than they have to be. But at the end of the day, you know, just keep it simple. You know, use your power of observation, see what works, see what doesn't work like you were elaborating on just a minute ago and, you know, that will solve most of your problems. It may not be instantaneous, instantaneous, but it will work. So, yes. Yeah. Well, Matt, we really appreciate you having having you here today and talking about this. You know, you've kind of opened the door to a pretty interesting topic, and you know, this is not just for you know your specific lab here in the U.S., but this is for basically anyone anywhere in the world, you know, who works in labs. And I think anyone can get a good sense of what they can do to kind of assess the situation for themselves and create kind of a a plan of action to help them stay healthy and still do what they need to do. So, yeah, for sure. I hope I was able to offer um, basically words on my, my, just my perspective on it. And yeah, it'd just be great. Uh, so yeah, I, I really hope like others can take that and really apply it, uh, benefit themselves and really, um, yeah. And help uh, guide others with the, that type of system i think i think it's worth a try for sure no well said well said and we really appreciate you you know joining us today for this and we all right yeah so uh, thank you everyone for uh listening to this podcast today um please check us out on anchor or spotify and leave us any comments or suggestions for content that you would like us to make we're always looking to do new new uh, recordings on different things and i know we've been focusing a lot on covid19 lately but let's face it that's kind of the 
pressing issue that's affecting everything, and it's probably the biggest global issue we'll be seeing in quite a while, or who knows, maybe even in our lifetimes. But um, like I said, you know, leave us comments, suggestions, thoughts. We'd love to hear them. And until next time, this is International Immersion. We always have our tradition of saying goodbye in the languages we know. So this is Sean saying goodbye, or Zaijian in Chinese. And Matt? Thank you. Thank you, Sean. And uh, goodbye. Adios, everyone. All righty. Thank you all for tuning in tonight. And thank you, thank you again, Matt. Thank you.